G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for today's edition of uh, my Power Rankings, which is a series that I've done the last couple of years where I try and rank teams based on uh, form lines and more or less trying to put together a ladder that is more reflective of where I personally think teams are at. Obviously, this early in the season, we're three rounds in, uh, the actual AFL ladder, it doesn't really give you a really reliable look at uh, which teams are better than others because they've only played three games. So the purposes of today's video and my rankings is to try to order the teams based on where I actually think they're at in terms of, I suppose, their ability to win the premiership. It's been a pretty interesting uh, opening three rounds of the season. Some teams doing a lot better than we expected and some teams doing a lot worse, as you'd understand. And that's not uncommon for the opening three rounds of any given season, but it does seem like there's some really surprising results. Geelong currently being 18th on the ladder for one, um, and that's probably a good example of a team that is nowhere near being the worst team in the competition, obviously having just won the premiership. So they're more likely to feature somewhere in the middle of my ladder. So how the video will work is that I will rank the teams from first all the way down to 18th based partially on some form that we've seen from this year, taking into account who they've played, how convincingly they've won. Um, I suppose I'll try and do, do my best to take into account injuries, although it's hard to be across that for all 18 teams. But bear in mind, obviously, this will be weighted heavily towards where teams finished last year. So for instance, the Geelong example is a good one. They're not going to be my 18th ranked side. The fact that they are the reigning premiers, the fact that they won the grand final by 80 points in emphatic fashion will weight into these rankings as well. So I normally do this every five rounds, but this year I might do a little bit more often, primarily because I'll have more time. Uh, but it'll be a wait and see because the, the opening three rounds of the season has been quite revealing. But as we get into rounds eight, nine, and ten, at that point of the season, the rankings will settle to some extent you'd expect, and therefore there won't be a reason to do it quite as often. So we'll see. As always, guys, this video is brought to you by the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, Manscaped.com. If you want 20% off and free shipping on all your male grooming needs in terms of the products that you can buy, the Lawnmower 4.0 is their top of the range. Body hair trimmer that is ceramic bladed. It comes with little light so that you can shave in the shower. It's waterproof. It's a great product for getting the job done quickly and easily. And you can buy all these various products and liquid formulations, as it were, as well through the website. So as I said, 20% off and free shipping. You'll be getting a great product and be helping out the channel. Cool, so we'll get straight into my rankings of how I see the 18 teams uh, ranking against each other, I suppose. And we'll start up right at the top, and in my head, there are three teams that are kind of a little bit above the rest in terms of, uh, I suppose, you weight the form from last season as well as the form we've seen so far. And the top team I have on current form has got to be the Collingwood Footy Club, who, of course, uh, you know, they're second on the ladder right now with 149%. They're 3-0, and and last year, you take into account that they uh, made a prelim and were very close to making a grand final, so they come into the season strong and haven't put a foot wrong, beating the Cats and the Power and then the Tigers most recently, and their percentage is 149%. So out of the top teams on current form, I think they've done the least to make me doubt them so far. It is only round three, but Collingwood are my form side of the competition. And then you've also got the next two and three sides, I think, are in their own little bracket. And I've got Melbourne as the second best team in the competition right now, uh, who finished top two last year. Yes, they went out in straight sets, but they've carried some pretty good form into the start of this year. They currently sit fourth with about 136%, and their wins so far have been a convincing win against both the Bulldogs and the Swans, two finalists from last year, and then a loss at the Gabba against a strong side in the Brisbane Lions. So for me, Melbourne are the next best side. And then after that, in third, I've got the Sydney Swans, who are, of course, the runners-up from last year's grand final. They currently sit fifth at 134%. A little bit harder to get a accurate reading on them. They've so far smashed both the Gold Coast Suns and Hawthorne, two sides we don't expect to play finals this year, uh, and then one loss most recently against the Demons. So the fact that they came against uh, another strong side in Melbourne and got pummeled makes them drop down the rankings for me. I probably would have had them higher than Melbourne going into round three. The next block of teams uh, in terms of how I rank them, a lot harder to separate. So uh, in fourth spot, I've given it to Carlton, who finished ninth last year, but are currently third with 109%. They have, uh, they're actually undefeated this year, having one draw against the Richmond Tigers and, uh, of course, beating the Cats in round two and then a tough win over the Giants. Just behind them, I've got St Kilda, who finished 10th last year and uh, first place with 150% on the ladder as it stands. I feel like their wins so far, they've been impressive, just as impressive as Carlton, who I have ahead of them. 
but probably the quality of opposition wasn't quite as convincing. They've beaten Essendon, Fremantle, and the Bulldogs, who all have form issues of their own. So uh, the fact that I've got St Kilda, who jumped from 10th on the ladder as the 5th best side in the competition right now, does speak to their improvement. But part of maintaining the integrity of these rankings is not just um, overshooting a side because they've had a good run of three games. So that's why I've got Carlton slightly ahead of St Kilda. Just behind them, I've got Brisbane falling away a little bit. They did finish 6th last year, and they're currently my 6th best side in the competition. They did make a prelim. A lot of expectation on Brisbane going into this season, but it's been a bit of a rocky start. One good win against the Demons and away losses to Port Adelaide and the Bulldogs most recently. The Port Adelaide loss was quite concerning considering Port Adelaide have been down since that game. But for me, Brisbane still well and truly in the mix and potentially a premiership contender, but on current form, they've dripped down to sixth place. In seventh spots, kind of stabilizing, I've got Richmond who currently sit eighth on the ladder, and they finished sixth last year, if I'm not mistaken. Their percentage is 109% this year, and they've had a draw with the Blues. They beat the Crows in Adelaide, and then most recently lost to the Pies. So their loss, their one loss of the season, was against uh, quality opposition, the team that I ranked number one as well. So Richmond, again, around that, that fifth to eighth bracket, I've got them currently seventh. In eighth spot, I've got the reigning premiers, and this is quite a dramatic fall from Grace. I know they're 18th on the ladder. To have them eighth in my rankings as well, that's quite a significant drop for a side that won the premiership convincingly. It has been a really concerning start for the Cats. Like I've said in previous videos, I'm not massively concerned about their ability to come back and play finals, and that's why I still have them in my top eight. But when you lose to the Gold Coast Suns, the Blue and the Pies in the way that they did. The Suns' loss in particular is the most concerning because they were already 0-2, so had every reason to throw you know, a lot at that game and were certainly beaten on the day by a side that just generally outplayed them. I do expect the Cats to stabilise, but on current form, they're eighth for me. Just outside my current top eight, I've got Fremantle, who of course finished fifth last year and currently sit ninth on the ladder, and that's where I've got them with a percentage of 112% getting their first win on the board against the West Coast Eagles on the weekend. And their two losses have been against the far improved St Kilda and North Melbourne. So it was a rocky start to the season uh, for the Dockers, but obviously the Derby, they've kind of stabilized a little bit. For me, yes, they got a win over the Eagles and uh, not to downplay it too much, but we have to take into account, you know, the, the injury situation at West Coast, the fact that West Coast aren't a great side to begin with. They haven't gone a massive way to answering some of the questions we have on Fremantle going into this year, in particular, the way they structure up. That being said, they're still in the finals mix for me. They certainly haven't done too much to fall any further than this. I just don't have them in my eight best sides in the competition right now. Now we're getting into a glut of teams that I find hard to separate, and this is probably the part of the, the rankings that will get the most criticism, but I've had a crack. Uh, in 10th spot, I've still got the Western Bulldogs, who finished 8th last year, and they're currently 16th with 66% this year, which is a, a pretty poor start to the year. There's absolutely no getting away from that, but it is only early days. Their losses have been to St Kilda and Melbourne, two sides that uh, are in my top five in the rankings, so that shows goes to show that they've played some quality opposition. It's been a tough fixture with their most recent win coming against the Brisbane Lions, uh, which is a good win considering the quality of opposition in that game. So while we've seen some concerning signs, you take into account the fact that they you know, were a finalist last year and they've had a tough fixture with teams I probably all rank higher than the Bulldogs as well. So they're still around that mid-table mark for me. Then I've got Port Adelaide uh, in 11th, where that's exactly where they finished last year. They currently sit 13th, and this one is a hard one because we've seen, like I've said before, a Jekyll and Hyde sort of start to the season for them. Very convincing in round one, very, very exciting, and then two poor showings in a row against Collingwood, and then most recently in the showdown against Adelaide. So they could start to bleed and fall down these rankings, but at the moment, not enough to suggest that they're too far below the sides that I'm going to mention as well. For me, I've certainly lost confidence in them as being a uh, walk-up start for finals. That's the way it looked after round one. And I, I didn't just think that from round one. I, I've been big on Port this preseason in terms of the potential to be finalists this year. But for me, from what I've seen so far in the opening rounds, I am not confident either way putting them up my rankings and certainly not putting them down. So for me, they're about where they were before. In 12th spot, I've got Essendon. And uh, this one, I don't know if it will seem harsh, but I think it's actually pretty generous considering the fact that they were 15th last year, a genuine bottom four side. So to have them jump up three spots on the first three rounds shows that they're trending in the right direction for sure. They're currently sixth on the ladder with 129%. And you factor in who they've beaten this year, it was the Hawks and the Suns, two sides that uh, you know I haven't even mentioned yet. So their one loss was a competitive loss against St Kilda, who look like they're in pretty good form. So I could see Essendon trending upward, but again, there's not so much of a sample size where I can confidently put them any higher than I have yet. So Essendon 12th, that's still three spots up from where they finished last year. 
In 13th spot, I've got North Melbourne again, another team who's risen quite a lot in my rankings. They're, of course, back-to-back wooden spooners and, uh, you know, were not great last year. So they're currently 7th with 94% with their two wins against the WA sides in West Coast in Round 1 and then a really good win in Perth in Round 2. Disappointing loss against the Hawks in Round 3. I know there's some injury concerns there. And while LDU... Um, Simkin, who was suspended, and Ben Mackay are all good players. Every side's dealing with injuries as well, so you kind of factor in as well if they're that vulnerable to losing some of their best players and they lose to Hawthorne, then there's still a little bit of room for improvement in terms of squad depth as well. But I've been very impressed with what I've seen with North Melbourne so far, and that's why they've jumped up five spots, uh, which is probably the biggest jump any team has made in these rankings. In 14th spot, I've got the Gold Coast Suns, who uh, finished 12th last year and currently sit 15th with 78%. So not a, not a massively encouraging start to the season for Gold Coast, uh, despite the fact that they've just beaten the reigning premiers in their most recent game, which was an impressive one. And their two losses have been to Sydney and Essendon as well. So again, I haven't seen any clear improvement for them. Beating Geelong is a great start. Start, but particularly disappointing in round one and uh, in round two they lost to Essendon again another team we're trying to get a read on here but I have Gold Coast roughly where they were you know the last couple of years in 15 spot I've got Adelaide who finished 14th last year so a little bit of regression um, which again feels harsh after they've just beaten Port Adelaide in a showdown but it wasn't a great opening couple of rounds for the Crows who lost to the Giants in round one a game that is really gettable in most senses if we're looking for clear improvement from Adelaide and a loss to the Tigers in round two as well They're currently 11th on the ladder with 94%. The win against the Power was very compelling, and it could be a sign that they're about to improve. But again, we're really trying to look at exposed form, factoring in last year, Adelaide around about the same mark based on current form. In 16th spot, I've got the West Coast Eagles. Slight improvement from last year. Well, in terms of numbers anyway, but in terms of performances, it's been massively improved. But they were so bad last year that 16th is still a massive improvement for them. They're currently 12th on the ladder with 90%, with a good win in round two over the Giants. And I say good win based more on the development of the game style and and the intent. And that was, again, evident in their loss to Fremantle. And they lost in round one to North Melbourne as well. So as an Eagles fan, I'm cautiously optimistic that they could, in theory, rise higher than this uh, as the season wears on, although it depends entirely on the injury situation, to be honest. So on exposed form, only beating the Giants so far, can't rank them any higher than this. In 17th spot, I've got the aforementioned GWS Giants, who did finish 16th last year. So the third worst team in the competition, and they currently sit 10th with 95%. They had a good win in round one against the Crows, where they fought back massively and showed a lot of character. Then they lost to the Eagles, and they lost to Carlton again. It was a pretty honorable loss in most respects specs but again we're looking at the exposed form of the Giants so far and we are yet to see enough demonstrated form for them to improve too much up my rankings as it stands they're probably the second weakest side in the competition right now and in 18 spot this might seem harsh I've got Hawthorne plummeting uh, from 13th where they finished last year they currently sit 17th only ahead of Geelong with a percentage of 60% it was a good win against North Melbourne on the weekend as well but in terms of the competitiveness of the opening two rounds a huge loss to both Sydney and Essendon and Essendon were a side that finished bottom four last year ranking them as the lowest side in the competition might seem harsh but while they are capable of beating teams when they're having an on day, we've seen that when they're having an off day, they can get absolutely annihilated. So again, this is no surprise. They've offloaded so much experience. They're investing heavily in the youth. Hawthorne for me is the side in the competition who I will have the least confidence in tipping each week. And as time goes on, who knows? The next time I do this video, it might be West Coast who's in 18th. I'm not too sure. But at the moment, Hawthorne are my lowest ranked side in the competition. Anyway, guys, that's my crack at a power rankings after three rounds. Um, It was probably a little bit of a too brave decision to try and make this video after three rounds. We're going to know more and more as each week goes on. I'd imagine some of you have some very, very different rankings than me. Again, this will be so much easier in round 15 where there's a lot more of a consensus. And after round three, it's still a little bit up in the air. But I thought it'd be fun to do. So I hope you enjoyed it. But let me know in the comments where you differ and where you agree with me. As always, I appreciate the support. I appreciate you watching the videos. Make sure you check out manscaped.com for that awesome discount. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.